Om en fara närmar sig så är det ju bäst att söka skydd. Men tänk om det inte går. Plants they are stuck where they grow. They cannot run away in the face of danger. Like if we see something coming at us, we will move out of the way or hide. So this is this is a good example. So here we have uh, damage, physical damage. It looks like from something big that passed here, probably. Simon Stall vill ta reda på hur växter klarar att överleva skador för att i framtiden kunna hjälpa växterna att överleva bättre. They can get uh, damaged uh, just from storms, uh, from yeah, human activity and uh, uh, herbivores, so big grazers but also small caterpillars. Exakt vilka livsviktiga processer som sker i växternas mikrokosmos när de skadas vet vi inte idag. Än så länge. I den lilla växten Backtrav här på Sveriges lantbruksuniversitet vill Simon Stahl hitta växternas hemliga försvar. So we are looking at it at the very early phases, within an hour, what is happening after the damage. In the cells, what processes are being switched on or switched off. Bladet får ett litet pinsett nyp. Och sen händer det. Inuti växternas celler finns kalcium. Normalt är nivåerna låga, men vid en skada sker en kraftig ökning av kalcium i en kort stund. En kalciumvåg sprider sig genom plantan som en varningssignal. Simon vill ta reda på vad som händer när den här varningssignalen ljuder. Depending on how severe is the damage, uh, this then can actually trigger a small wave uh, of uh, of the other cells reacting on that initial uh, point of damage. You can you can compare that to an alarm system. So here you see another very good example. Yeah, this leaf is only this is only a skeleton of the leaf yet. So you see the veins are still there. But uh, the buck has eaten everything in between the veins. And that's something peculiar. So it's something we see also from our studies. Once you hit one of the big veins, then you get a bigger response going on in the plant that actually goes throughout the whole plant. So maybe it is a way of the buck of trying to avoid that, uh, that response. Simon växed up in Belgium, in the city of Brygge. Mycket långt ifrån svenska storskogar, men nyfikenheten den fanns där redan då. Fascination already came from being very young, just trying to find out, you know, how does this work ah, and what is behind that and how does that so kind of drilling down to what, you know, what is below that. Uh, so I think that really got me to study uh, uh, biology in the first place and then also molecular biology. So we really try to drill down to those molecular processes to the, what, what is going on. Kalsiumvågen som följer genom en skadad växt startar livsviktiga processer. Och Simon har sett att speciella enzymer, så kallade proteaser, aktiveras när växten larmar om skada. Proteaserna kan påverka proteiner, cellernas arbetare. Genom att klyva proteiner kan de stänga av dem eller aktivera dem? Får de att ta sig till en annan plats eller att ändra funktion? 
Och just nu kartlägger Simons team alla proteaser som börjar jobba vid skada och vilka läkeprocesser de styr. Plants är remarkably good at regeneration. And we are investigating if proteases are indeed involved there. And that is one way of overcoming those, uh, the damage of just regenerating a completely new organ or you know, new, you chop off a branch and a completely new one comes there. If you do that with a human, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It always amazes myself that once you kind of find a, a novel finding, something new, you, for yourself to kind of start believing in it, it also takes a while. So I, I really hope to come to this stage where I'm like, oh, okay, wow, there is now this body of knowledge that we created. What do we do now with it? Simon hopes to help both human and plants with his forskning. Uh, one such idea is to try and make pesticides more selective. I jordbruk används bekämpningsmedel mot skadinsekter eller svampsjukdomar. Men giftet dödar även liv som inte gör någon skada. Simon vill använda sina resultat för att utveckla ett bekämpningsmedel där giftigheten bara slås på när den verkligen behövs. Och det på proteasernas signal. So for example when a caterpillar is munching on on the crop only then is the the pesticide toxic and not for example when a pollinator is coming into contact accidentally with the pesticide ingested it should not be killed by 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 those pesticides at, at least that is the hope. <laughs> yeah.